and welcome to the second episode of the Baggies Broadcast Fan Chat Show, the new place where you, the Baggies fans, can have your say on the Albion and the latest goings on down at the Hawthorns. And tonight, I'm delighted to say I'm alongside another two Albion fans to discuss the latest results involving Carlos Corberan's men. And with us tonight, we've got, well, a recognisable voice, and now it'll be a recognisable face. We've got Tom Smith, TJ Smithy, the resident Baggies Broadcast Quiz Master. Luckily, he hasn't got any of his real rock-hard, solid <laughs> quiz questions tonight. His, his Baggies Broadcast University Challenge quiz questions, as, as I'm going to start calling them from now on. And we've got returning to the show, and who's dug us out of a hole tonight, replacing a, a guest we had down. We've got Sunil Patel. Sunil was with us a couple of weeks ago. He'll be having his say on some of the latest goings-on down at the Albion. Um, so, well, it was all positive last time, Sunil. We were talking about... This, that and the other, charging towards the playoffs. Albion couldn't stop winning, couldn't stop scoring. Um, now we're talking about about one one win in five. I'll come to you to you first, um, Sunil. It is yeah. one win in five. On the back of that incredible, whatever it was, 10 wins in 12 or, or 9 in 10 or something. You were there on, on Monday evening at, at Vicarage Road and I'm sure you've watched with a, a keen eye all the, the recent games. What What's gone wrong? What What's... It feels weird saying what's gone wrong, given how far core brands brought Albion. But but what has gone wrong in recent weeks for you? Yeah, it's, uh, it's strange, really. Um, we seem to have just lost lost a, lost a bit of momentum. Um, you think we'd have the new manager sign the contract, we'd sort of be on the upward uh, trajectory. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's noticeable. I think the defence is started being a bit more leaky, um, and the games that we're watching when, when core brand first took over. Wasn't necessarily the most thrilling football, but it was quite well structured, organised, um, sort of the way we wanted to be. And the last few games that I've seen, I went, I went to the Watford game on Monday and saw Birmingham game on catch up. They sort of sort of, sort of becoming sort of end to end games. Monday was a crazy game, sort of becoming like a, a basketball game. Um, and they're sort of not the games that I think that Corbran would want to have us playing. Um, I mean, the first forty five was like I don't really use the phrase. It's 45 minutes of my life I won't sort of get back <laughs> for the for the Watford game. Um, I think the most exciting part was when that fan got chucked out, the home fan after like half an hour. Yeah. Um, but it was it was when I watched that team, if you didn't know who was in charge, it sort of it was almost like a Steve Bruce sort of type performance, I thought, the first half. Um we just didn't sort of we didn't have any pressure, uh, we had no control in possession. We looked very shaky at the back. Um and I feel it's perhaps been coming in the last few weeks gradually, but I think away from home is certainly been a sort of cause for concern. Phillips being out, we just don't seem to have solved that problem. Obviously, that uh, Palm has been injured as well. Um, been a lot of tinkering as well, which I'm sure we'll come on to. Um, but I just feel we had quite a solid team, didn't really change a lot of things. We had a couple of things go wrong in the FA Cup. Um, but we just seem to have lost a bit of consistency, really. Um, so, yeah, it's been, been a bit disappointing in the last few games. You mentioned the goalkeeper situation there. Do you think, uh, and in, re in the last couple of games, Albin have looked a little bit shaky at the back. Do you think that uncertainty surrounding the goalkeeper situation has maybe rubbed off on that back four? Because, you know, if we look at what we're going to come on to, if, if you think there should be any changes, but I think up until the Burnley game, they'd only conceded five away from home. Prior to Blackburn scoring in that home game, we had the incredible stat that it was going to be the first time Albion had gone sort of seven or eight league games yeah. without conceding and winning every game. Do you think that the goalkeeper scenario has, has, has thrown a bit of, well, I don't know really, do you think it's impacted the back line? Um, it's an interesting one. There's been quite a lot of discussion on the media about the impact of that. Obviously, with Button there, <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we were all petrified and it would have had a big impact. I thought Griffiths did OK on Monday. I personally don't think it's just down to the goalkeeper. I think even when Palmer was playing in a few of the games away from home, we'd be conceding a few. Um, I just think the defence has been a bit more sort of exposed. Um, I think on Monday in particular, uh, the midfield balance was, was completely wrong uh, with Shalabar and Yukushlu. Um And Watford just seemed to come on top of us quite easily. If there, you know, there was no sort of... It wasn't easy for them to get to our defence. Which is why I think they don't look didn't look that great. Um, I think at home, especially when we made the incredible run of clean sheets, it was noticeable that we sort of be pressing teams and making life very hard for them. So they wouldn't have many chances. Um, and Watford, 
you know, we let in three. They could have had two or three more. So personally, I, I think it's more because of the way the team is ahead of the defence rather than necessarily just what, what's behind them. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, it's um, it's an interesting point. You mentioned tinkering there as well. Um, Tom, mm-hmm. I'll come to you on this one. You know, there has been changes. Uh, we're just going to. I just want to talk about the two new signings, the January signings. Now we've seen fits and starts from both Chalaber and or Brighton, but I'm sure, like many Baggies fans, you'll you'll have expected to see a little bit more from the pair of them, given their sort of Premier League, well, old Brighton, and certainly Premier League pedigree. Oh yeah, definitely. I feel like. Uh... They've almost like everyone thought they were going to have a bit of momentum with coming into the team, but I feel like we, we've seen glimpses of like turns from Chalabert and crosses in from Albrighton, but it just seems like it's just not hit the ground running. I'm not sure if that's the change of system from going from Fulham to West Brom or from Leicester to West Brom, uh, but I also just think it's. Uh, Carl Scorbrand not knowing his best 11. I think the main thing I, I said to you on Monday night uh, at half time that we just missed Malumbi. We missed his energy in the middle of the park when Chalaber was in there. Although him and Yakushlu were absolutely amazing on the ball, they just need that Malumbi presence just to run around and put his face into people, really. <laughs> that's what that's his. Bed and, uh, his bread and butter and uh, yeah I feel like uh, with Albrighton it's almost a case of it's him and uh, and Wallace and he doesn't want to take Wallace out of the team because of how much of a, an influence he has but when you start bringing Swift off the bench and playing a right winger into that number 10 role it just doesn't fit the balance I feel like if you actually put all Brighton on the right and have Swift to bring in the balls, it would work well. But you just don't want to take Wallace off the bench. Unless you can have uh, all Brighton on the left, um, as we've seen him play for Leicester at times. It's uh, just I'm not sure. It's just I feel like it's just tinkering at the minute. I feel like the January signings came in late. They haven't had much time to settle in and I feel like they just need to we all need to have a a couple more games just to see what's happening really yeah just so on the on the we'll just sort of jumping back and forward here but just I want to Mm -hmm. speak about the the, we spoke defensively and the goalkeeper and 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 they've looked a little bit shaky um I think the stat Mm -hmm. was that I worked out before and prior to Burnley from Colbrand first taking over it was in five games they conceded um Five goals since Burnley at seven and three on the road, um, and the home record still still as good as it was. I, we had some questions into the Baggies broadcast today. Um, what what are your feelings on Shemi Ajayi? Because some have said that it might be time for him to come back in, um, given this sort of little bumpy mini run. Uh, we we briefly spoke about Ajayi um, on the last mm. show. What what would your thoughts be on that? And and do you think there needs to be needs to be any, it does there might be no changes to the back four, but does there need to be any changes? Yeah, I'm I'm not as keen as others actually on Ajayi. I think if anyone was to come in, would be Bartley. And obviously he, he is he is injured, isn't he, for the next next few weeks. Ajayi, I just don't think he, I'm not sure if he'd add any value to, to the issues we've got. We like to pass we like to, you know, from from goal kicks etc and, and we generally like to build from the back especially at home I don't think he's that good on the ball um obviously he's quick which, which helps but I think I saw I went to the Bristol game appreciate it was an FA Cup game but he just seems to be caught out of position quite a lot I don't think he's really a natural natural defender if that kind of makes sense I don't think he overly reads the game that well so personally I, I'm not as keen as I don't I'd like to say I think the issues are maybe more in front of the defense um I think as well, if you bring him in, um, I think O'Shea then has to move left, I think, because Ajayi tends to play on the right, which again throws the balance off a little bit because Peter is, is, is left-footed. Um, I think it's because people want to see a change and it's like, well, the defence is conceding. Let's get someone else in to make a difference. But to be honest, if you swapped him in, I'm not as convinced that he would actually necessarily improve us. He may give us more of a threat from set pieces, personally. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm not I'm not as keen on others to, to see him come in. I think that back four is actually okay and quite settled. Yeah, um, just a, I think just 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 had a thought mm. then. He, I, I might, my memory might be deceiving me, but I remember Shemi Jai playing as like a defensive midfielder under under Slavin Bilic a few years ago. You know, that's a, that an interesting option. I wonder it would be interesting yeah. to see if that's ever crossed Carlos Corbran's mind in terms of him in their big presence pace as well. I'm sure. I'm I'm hundred percent sure we won't see it. I'm, but I'm I'm pretty sure it came from Rotherham as a, a CDM, and we transitioned mm. him into that uh, centre back role. I remember him uh, when we came in. Who was com- coming in as a CDM and obviously went up to the centre back. So I do actually think he is quite good on on the ball. I mean, you have mm. to be quite good to, uh, especially in the Premier League, uh, with uh, pressure coming from lots of teams. And I think he does bring that balance as well. I just feel like from his injury to then coming back into the FA Cup and when he's come off, he just seems off the boil. But I feel like if he did come back in, it might be another one of them where you've got to then have a couple of games to get back up to the match fitness. But then again, you'd have the same thing with Bartley. I always feel like Bartley and Ajayi are possible starters. And when you look at Peters coming in now as a another starter and there's competition for places, it's it's always going to be a bit of a mind a, a headache with going through these yeah well, i'm sure it's uh if everyone was fit it's a headache that corbran would like just we've, we spoke defensively we've focused very much on the goalkeeper in the center half tom just on the fullbacks now people have got different opinions on furlong and townsend you know furlong first time we saw him the long throw work for a long long time against coventry mm-hmm. the, the weapon that he's got townsend obviously scored the other day you know they've had for me they've had up and down seasons what's your your sort of opinion of and there isn't a lot of competition for places in the full back positions is there really at the moment yeah i think the only competition you've got really is uh reach coming off the bench uh he comes on i don't think he does as much as he possibly would like to you've got uh taylor Gardner hitman who's just an amazing player uh i'm not sure if uh carl's corbran is protecting him a little bit to uh give him a run of games and then take him out of the side a bit. Uh, but when you're looking at other covers, there's not really much in there. Uh, I feel like with uh, Furlong and Townsend, they've always put in a performance defensively. I feel like they've had a complete new lease of life under Carl Scorbran. Uh, and the stats show with Townsend, he scored two goals when he scored once in his past three seasons in the FA Cup and same with uh, Furlong I feel like his crossing has got 10 times better than we've seen and obviously he's he's always got the weapon with his long throws I feel like them, them two are going to be starters from now until the rest of the season and I don't feel like Carlos Corbran wants to change too much with possibly bringing in Taylor Garden Hitman I feel like he's going to be going for more experienced sides now until the end of the season so whether uh, he comes off the bench or I know he's been left out of the side a couple of times in recent weeks but I feel like come to the end of the season he's going to need that extra energy and I feel like he'll uh, the Garden Hitman will play a big part towards the tail end yeah, it'll be interesting to see on his position, and we'll we'll talk. We're going to talk a lot about Taylor Gardner in a, in a couple of weeks because um, Albion fans have got some very sort of strong opinions and views on on TGH. Uh, Sonny, I'm just going to before we sort of wrap up and go towards the end of the show. This is quite a good talking point, so this will take us right up to the end of the show. Um, the number ten role now, as Tom's alluded to, Jed Wallace has gone in there. Fans didn't like that. We've seen various different Tom Rockets who we're going to chat about in a, in a second. Um, we haven't seen for a while. John Swift's gone back in there now. You know, the last couple of games, I thought Monday he was he was very creative. Um, I thought last week as well against Blackburn, he was he, he was our main creator. Is, is he? You know, you'd think John Swift coming from Reading, and this is a point someone made to me the other day. The amount of assists he's got, you know, one of the best players in the Championship in recent years. Um, he should really he should, he should have really been always been one of the first names on Albion's team sheet, really, shouldn't he? And and he's he's come out of the side and hasn't he's gone out left, but should he be now? You know. Is he the one that you play right 10 every game? He's got to play in the 10. If you're playing that system, he, he needs to play in that role because that's where he's the best. 
Yeah, without a doubt, I think. I think he's he's perhaps not had the impact I was hoping for um, based on his reputation um, in terms of goals and assists. I don't know the exact number. I think he's he scored three or four, isn't he? Maybe, maybe a two or three assists. Um, he just has to be the number 10. I think Monday was a prime example. He just is not comfortable on the left. Um, Burnley away, I think he started there as well um, as we're trying to solve this problem position on the left. But he's just the one that... I don't know how to say it, but I think you notice it more when he's kind of not there in the number 10, if that makes sense. I think sometimes in a game you think, oh, is he really doing much? Has he really created enough? But I think if you if you pull him out of that that position and you put Wallace in there, you can really see the difference in terms of how we sort of construct the attacks. So for me, if we are going to stick with the with the one up front, um, yeah, I absolutely agree that he should be in the number 10 and, and nowhere else. I don't really want to see him. I thought maybe he could play off the left, but I just don't think that really is his game. And I think we just, he just seems to be much better just off the front man. So I think we just need to, and I think we will maybe see that. I think the second half, the fact he dropped into that role at half time was just that Corbrand's thinking, I'm going to I'm going to stick him there. So we'll see against Middlesbrough. But yeah, I think he definitely needs to start in, in that 10 role now. Yeah, it's one of them, isn't it? You, you play him left, yeah, he can cut in and get crosses in, but Albion almost this season play wingers with chalk on their boots, you know, how wide Wallace has been on one side, Dean Garner. Swift, pop, he hasn't really got that pace, has he, to play as that that way? He's almost like, a, I don't know, I'm, I'm showing my age now, I can't remember these positions, but like an, in, like an inside, they used to call him inside forwards, I think, or inside you know, you play, forward, quite, yeah. play like a narrow winger. He, that, he can play as a narrow winger, but he hasn't really got the pace to play as that out and out winger, so you lose that a bit, don't you? I feel like yeah, Swift, he, always, he almost uh, reminds me of Morrison in a way, where he can almost pick out them passes, get uh, the wingers in behind the defence and play that killer ball. Uh, like I, I said at the start of the season, that uh, Wallace and Swift coming in almost reminds me of when Brunt and Morrison both came in with that amazing winger that can just whip in balls left, right and centre and then Swift coming in to uh, play these amazing balls. We've seen him in pre-season, some of the balls that he's done and throughout the season, just these killer passes that he can't do. Uh, I feel like there's uh, almost like two or three good games that he has uh, and then he sort of slips away. But then all, all obviously through... Uh, trying to say through the actual game you see these glimpses and I feel like it just needs to be more of a consistent level but No I think that's yeah I think, you, think you're right there just on that 10 Tom I'll stick with you you know in terms of the options that Albion have got in there you know fans have been calling for and, and Carlos Corbran was asked about it last week and talked about you know playing uh, Brandon Thomas Asante and Daryl DK. You know, Thomas Asante strikes me as someone very um, versatile. We see prior to games, fans put these predicted team sheets out with a little graphic and stuff. And a lot of fans put Thomas Asante out wide left or out wide right. Uh, well, more out wide left, really, because you've got Wallace on the right. Could he be an option in that that 10? Because he's technically good and he's strong. You know, he's deceptively strong for his size. You know, could he pick and he can pick a pass as well? Is that something... You know, not necessarily Corbrown will do it, but is that maybe an option in there? Another sort of string to the front line, Bo? Yeah, you can have him in that number 10, but I feel like with both him and DK, they both want to be that striker. I feel like if they both, if you put Thomas Santi in that number 10, it will almost be a 4 4 2 with how they, they are. I feel like obviously in, in that defensive position, they do go to a 4-4-2 and in attack I feel like they'll both be wanting to go in the box as when you see Swift he likes to drop back as we see a lot of time with Wallace's crosses and I feel like they'd uh, I mean I could be wrong here but I feel like they'll it would end up just forming that 4-4-2 which a lot of fans you see on Twitter all the time they want to see both of them up front together they want to see that almost like like Shane Long Lukaku partnership that we had yeah. so well I was, was going to say Dwight York and Andy Cole but I don't think he's <laughs> I had Hesky, oh, they're, they're. Hesky and Michael Owen in my head I had, <laughs> that was the, the England partnership um, trying to keep it more 
West Brom related. More Alfred, yeah, more Alfred. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've just got a couple. One final question before we just wrap up. I'll get a prediction from you both for Middlesbrough on uh, on Saturday at the Hawthorns. Um, so now we, I mentioned Tom Rogic's name there. He, he's been injured, but prior to that, he wasn't really involved. Um, and a lot of Albion players say, "Oh, yeah, he can only do it in Scotland and all this." But it wasn't long ago he was scoring goals on the outside of his boot against Sunderland, and he was like just picking passes on the volley against Rotherham. You know, we forget he's still an option there. Yeah, he hasn't showed it, but. You know, certainly in recent weeks prior to his injury, but he's he's still an option in there. Do you think he could potentially play a part between now and the end of the season? Um, we'd like to think so. Like I said, we don't have huge amounts of options in that in that position, really. I know Wallace has played there, but he's wasted there. He needs to be out wide. I think for like you know, if we do get to playoffs, I think he'd be worthy of a place on the bench uh, potentially. Even more those, you know, I'm not a big fan of Carl and Grant, even if more more so than him. But I don't know whether he's just Falling out of favour a bit, he's not even be making making the bench. But yeah, for for a cameo, certainly, I think he's got a part to play. But I think I think there's no chance he's going to be starting before between now and the end of the season, based on what's happened the last few weeks. Uh, well, there we go. Three big talking points uh, down at the Hawthorns. There's a big game down at the Hawthorns on Saturday as well as Middlesbrough roll into town in form. Middlesbrough, they're winning everything, but they've got to lose at some point. So hopefully it is on Saturday. Before we wrap up, guys, Sunil, score prediction from you. What are you saying? Oh, I'm the ultimate pessimist, Johnny, but... Well, that's, that's every Albion fan, isn't it? Really? <laughs> I'm hoping the second half change to the team and the performance, even though we lost probably through to Saturday. So I'm going to go for 2-1 to the Albion. And do you want to score her? Should we have a score go in on, there? Go for, go for, who's going to get the first goal? We'll go first goal. I'm going to go Wallace again. I fancy Wallace again. Wallace go for again. Wallace again. Super chat, yeah. Tom? Final word from you. What's going to happen on Saturday? What's your prediction? Well, I was going to go 2-1 with Middlesbrough scoring first in the first couple of minutes as uh, we like to concede a lot. But I'll, I'll go for a bog-standard Hawthorns 1-0. We'll take that. 1-0 <laughs> off someone's backside in the 94th minute. We'd uh, we'd absolutely snap your hand off that. Well, guys, thank you once again for coming on the Baggies Broadcast Fan Chat Show and having your say on the album. If you want to get involved in our, our new show, come and have your say on the Baggies and what we'll be talking about on individual weeks. You can do. You can tweet me or drop me a, a direct message on Twitter. Just search for at Johnny Jury underscore star and I'll get back in touch with you very, very soon. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. If you've watched this and you want a bit more Baggies chat, me and Lewis Cox were convening this morning to chat all things Albion. We've got an hour-long episode that's out at the moment um, in all the usual places on Spotify, on SoundCloud and on Apple. Again, thanks for listening. Have a great end to the week. Have a great weekend. Hopefully three points from Albion. And until next time on the Baggies Broadcast Fan Chat Show, boing, boing.